Now, here now uh, is Tennessee Congressman Mark Green, former Army Special Forces operator and Foreign Affairs Committee member. Also here is Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek, cr creating a bit of a stir uh, on uh, Twitter earlier today. Congresswoman, we'll get to you in one second here. Congressman Green, uh, obviously this is embarrassing. Uh, we clearly see that important people, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, his, his Secretary of Defense, uh, his, his State Department, seem to not be communicating. He's being contradicted by his own people pretty much in real time, like within an hour. Uh, tell me your thoughts on this within your position and certainly your experience with Afghanistan. Sure, and thanks for having me on. It, Joe Biden has created the greatest hostage crisis in American history. Uh, he's a clear and present danger to the safety of Americans. We have 10,000 Americans who are stranded on the other side of the, you know, the wire there in Kabul, and for days they've implied they wouldn't even go after them. You had to have the British and the French go after their people to motivate our president to actually go and do something. And I blame the president for that. You know, in the press conferences I've heard with Mark Milley, he said this the other day, that's a policy decision and we are ready to execute. That basically tells me that he wants to do it. He wants to act, but he needs a, a, approval from the commander in chief. And this commander in chief has lost complete touch with reality. You've pointed out many contradictions that are directly from Joe Biden himself. Now, granted, State Department, they have utterly failed. I've got tons yeah. of friends in the military. They're telling me they've been executing the missions that the commander's given them. Yeah. But the State Department has been asleep at the wheel. You know, I'll tell you something, sir. One of the biggest statements you could make would be for him to resign and say that I, he'd had absolutely. enough. Absolutely. Yeah, know, so I've there, said he should. There's actions. You can resign because you're embarrassed or you can resign because you're not being listened to and it's that dangerous. Congresswoman, uh, Pelosi said something on a phone call today that you were on because there's other things going on behind the scenes. The media isn't necessarily there. You were, were involved in a phone call today that completely shocked you, what, what uh, uh, Pelosi said. What was that exactly? Yeah, you know, Tammy, thank you so much for your passionate coverage of this. This is absolutely ludicrous where we find ourselves. And, you know, my colleagues and I, we were on a call today with SecDef Austin, with Secretary Blinken, and with General Milley. And the first question, when they opened it up to members of Congress, went to Speaker Pelosi. She praised the leadership and the White House. She praised the three gentlemen that we were on the phone with. But the thing that struck me the hardest was her comment towards the end of, quote, everything sounds like it's okay and going good. Everyone just needs to get to the airport. Wow. It took me about 10 minutes to wow. get my job. Yes. The, uh, Madam Speaker, this is not like you can take an Uber to the Kabul airport. Mm. You can't take a casual stroll down the street and make it through checkpoints. This is absolutely insane that the Speaker of the House made a comment so out of touch, so tone deaf, so ridiculous, uh, really out of touch of what is happening, boots on the ground. In my office alone, we have over 150 individuals, U.S. citizens and visa holders that we are trying to get out of country. They are, sh they are sending us videos where they have been beaten, where they are hiding from the Taliban. They can't talk on the phone because they are literally in hiding. They are emailing, yeah. they are this is insane. This is the Speaker of the House. When you talk about a failure of leadership, again, the boots on yeah. the ground, they're, they're getting it right. It's the suits in Washington that have, have failed. Congresswoman, There's a crisis of confidence yeah. with the White House. There, there is, this is, I think this is what is so disturbing uh, Americans and the world, and that's what's making this uh, uh, so dangerous. Truly disturbing, of course, after what you've discussed about the Taliban, what we know is happening in Afghanistan, uh, listen to this. The Biden administration refuses to call uh, the Taliban uh, our enemy. Listen to this. Does the U.S. military con consider the Taliban an enemy? Uh, we are focused right now. Uh, the, the the thing we're 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 working against right now is is time and space. Congressman Green, this is like uh, you know a country that is being run by a bunch of Ted Bundys and Charles Mansons. <laughs> all right, you've got these are serial killers. These are pedophilic. They, they, they're, they they're sexually savages. abuse children. They're savages. Uh, they they sexually enslave men they, and women. They this killed is insane. My friends. T t what is what is your people you know have been murdered by these individuals? What yes. do you think of this lack of a willingness? What does it mean that we won't call them the enemy of this country? 
Well, this is so typical of Democrats. Whether it was Carter who wanted detente with the Soviet Union, uh, Bill Clinton who pulled out of Somalia as soon as we got a bloody nose and that brought about Al Qaeda, Obama, Biden actually pulling out of Iraq in 2011 to create ISIS. This is just who they are. They can't name the enemy. And the Taliban killed my friends. The Taliban killed hundreds of Americans. Our allies have died and they can't call them an enemy. They want, they're marrying six year olds. This, this is a sadistic, pedophilic ideology. They are the enemy and they should be crushed. What we're doing right now is absolutely absurd. We're, we're just basically capitulating and running away. You know, and, it, and, I'm sorry, well, go ahead. No, it just, it seems to me, uh, Congresswoman uh, Kamek, that they almost wanted some kind of thing to celebrate on September 11th. None of this is, makes any sense. It's all, it sounds insane. Uh, is there, we've got about uh, 15 seconds here. Uh, with the last no, word, what, what do you think of the, this entire rollout and what this means? This this entire drawdown withdrawal has been motivated by politics, pure and simple. 9-11 was a political date to meet. Now yes. we are seeing that has been moved up. There's no question. This is exactly why politics should not be driving policy. That is why we have a crisis in the confidence of our military leadership, and that includes the commander in chief. I agree wholeheartedly with my colleague, Mark Green. The, these people are the enemy. There is no legitimacy in their government. This is something that we cannot stand for. They enslave little girls, they traffic in humans. This cannot stand. Yes. And I have tell you, the women and girls that have grown up under the last 20 years, they're in for a horrific future. We need to get very serious about getting our people out and then dealing with how we are going to respond to not only the, the inventory of arms and munitions that we have left behind, but the human rights violations that are going to occur under this Taliban rule. Very good point. And for those who say that this is none of our business, this is just their business, this is a cancer. It will move uh, with Iran and with Russia, working with China. This is the kind of thing that does not stay put. This is about who we are and also worrying and caring about this country. And we can walk and chew gum at the same time. None of this had to happen. Getting out of Afghanistan, I think Americans are united in that. This was a complete catastrophe, and that's what we're talking about. Uh, Congressman oh. Green and Congressman uh, Kamek, thank you uh, for Thanks. joining us.